everyone it's Laura Binding and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beaded necklace we're going to be using the rose gold 925 stuck in silver slider bracelet as the actual necklace finishing clasp so that you can use this to adjust the length and also to make it long enough to be able to pop it straight over to your straight over your head so I'm actually using that as the finishing feature but it can also be used, of course, in the more traditional way. I've made a matching bracelet just here using a similar technique and um, a matching stacker style bracelet just using the cubes as well. Okay, so the materials I'm going to be using for this project are I'm going to be using these lovely rose gold coloured hematites or almost little cubes. They're faceted and they are so beautiful. And these are a about a three mil. I'm then going to be using these beautiful purple garnets and I'm, these are plain round beads and again these are about a three and a half mil. And then I'm going to be using this beautiful rose gold plated brass slider bracelet. It's a box chain and it's got this beautiful almost like little donut slider connector just here. I've also chosen to add in just a couple of crimp beads and crimp bead covers just to connect it all together and again tying in with the colour theme I've gone for the rose gold sort of coppery colour. Okay tools are very minimal for this project I'm going to be using my flush cutters simply to cut the beading thread I'm going to be using my chain nose pliers and my crimping pliers but that's really all you need. Okay, so what I'm going to show you in this project is, first of all, how to get a nice, secure connection to these beautiful slider bracelets, because you will be getting three in the kit, so it's nice to know how you can actually attach it to make your designs. Um, I'm then going to show you just how I've done this kind of beaded detail just down here, just to give that little bit of added detail make it look a little bit different I really love the contrast of the colors between this lovely garnet and the rose gold kind of hematite I think it's a beautiful combination and again the mixture of the textures having a faceted almost little squares and then these beautiful lovely plain rounds just here Okay, I did of course forget to mention that you will need to use some kind of threaded material. Now you can use either your beading thread or you could use your monofilament. I personally prefer to use beading thread, that's just my preference. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut about two meters of my rose goldy, coppery coloured beading thread. I feel that this will tie in better with the materials that we're using. Now I know that to me it seems like quite a lot, but we will be folding this over and working almost as if it's um, two strands are one so technically it's almost like you're using one meter now the reason we need the, the double strands is because we're going to be creating these sort of little circle effects throughout the design so again we will be reducing the amount of beading thread that we use because we're going to be going through some of the gemstones twice but to get started, I'm going to be attaching my beading thread directly to my slider bracelet. Now, on the bracelets themselves, they have these two little jump ring sort of connectors on two of the ends. So you'll see there's two that have like a little bead as the finishing. That will stop them going through the slider clasp. And then you have these two sort of soldered loops. So because these have been soldered, I know I'm going to get maximum security if I can attach my beading thread directly onto that because there's no cut, because there's no gap for the necklace to come disconnected. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just pop this soldered loop straight on and drop it right the way down to the centre of those two wires. Then I'm going to go and add my crimp bead onto both those wires and just bring that all the way down so I've got a, a loop that I'm happy with the size of that and then I'm going to come in with my crimping pliers and flatten so I'm going to slide that crimp bead all the way down leave a little bit of a loop because you want some movement and crimp that 
crimp flat. So just quickly rounded that crimp and I'm going to add my crimp cover. So again I'm just going to take that crimp cover, pop it over the crimp bead, hold that nice and steady and just pinch this closed. Okay, so there you go, that's nice and connected, that's nice and steady, that can't go anywhere and we're going to go ahead and start building this design. Okay, so to start the design what I'm going to go ahead and do is again treating both of these beading thrusts as if they're one, I'm just going to add 24 of the hematite. I've added my 24 hematite gemstones and now I've got my two wires ready to do the garnet detail. So as you can see on this piece here, this is just a variation of the right angle weave. I just think it looks really effective and being in a different shape and textures it really adds a different look. So, so what I've gone ahead and done now is added three garnets onto each side of the beading thread. Okay, I'm then taking a, another single garnet and I've put both the beading threads going through in opposite directions and then I'm going to bring that all the way to meet the others. Okay, like this and that will give me my first part of my little section. I'm then going to repeat the same again so I'm going to add another three and another three and then I'm going to bring them both through in opposite directions a single one. So you can see here that I've just repeated that process so I've just added three then three and added one more with both the bean threads going through to lock that together. I'm then going to add three onto each side again and I'm just going to pick this pattern back up where both the wires go through the cubes. So as you can see here I've gone ahead and added those another three of the garnets onto either side and all I've done is added five of the hematite onto both those wires so that when I feed them down they will lock that little section into shape. Now you can take a moment and make sure they're sitting exactly as you want them to sit but there you have that little section there. Now again that's exactly how I did the section on the bracelet as you can see here if you just want to keep it simple so if I added a little bead either side and that is that one section now this necklace is made up basically of that same repetition um, I just broke the patterning up a little bit so you can see here here's the first one and then I went ahead and did five of the hematite another section and then I broke it down to three and then I did the centre section and the only thing that I made different was so that that centre circle would be in the hematite and I just made an additional centre so you'll see here that we've got the same section as previous but instead of just doing another one and finishing I added an extra little circle detail with the cubes and then continued it back down and then you just mirror that pattern all the way to the opposite side and then you simply finish the necklace off in exactly the same way. Then you've got your finished necklace ready to be worn. I hope you like this project and I look forward to seeing what you come up with.